discovered a dead baby in the bathroom. Oh my gosh. That's funny. They came up and me and I didn't know what to do. Maxie, I told you about this. But if I just asked you, baby, to tell me the truth. It was not crying or making. A 19-year-old woman who allegedly killed her newborn son by stuffing him in a hospital trash can is released from jail on $100,000 bond ahead of her high school graduation. Like how big is the baby? It's full term. What? Nothing, Nine months? Nothing was crying. Officials say Alexi Treviso went to an Artesia, New Mexico hospital in late December complaining of severe back pain. Disturbing body camera footage from January 27th shows hospital staff speaking with officers after a newborn was found inside the bloody bathroom Treviso had just used. The baby's dead, okay? We have him in trauma too, but she killed the kid. The newborn baby died and Treviso was charged with first degree murder and tampering with evidence. But just this week, Treviso was released from custody on $100,000 bond. Court documents show Treviso will be allowed to attend her high school graduation on May 25th. She'll be required to follow a 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. curfew, but will not have to wear an ankle monitor or be placed on house arrest. She'll also be allowed to leave the state of New Mexico and visit family in Texas unsupervised. Defense attorney Charles Rickers tells Law & Crime Network those stipulations are not unusual. I don't think that there's anything surprising or unusual about it. Number one, she should be considered innocent until proven guilty, one. Number two, and more importantly, as far as deciding whether to give her a lower bond or what have you, she's not a flight risk. She's a 19 year old girl. Uh, unless she's an heiress to some fortune where she can flee the country or whatever, but I'm sure that the court if that were the case, would have probably confiscated any kind of uh, passport, which is standard. So I don't think she's a flight risk. The whole purpose of bond is to make sure that someone shows up in, in court. And probably $100,000 in this situation is more than adequate to make sure that she shows up. Ritgers may be most known for representing Brooke Schuyler Richardson, the Ohio woman accused of murdering her newborn baby and burying her in her parents' backyard when she was 17. At trial in 2019, Richardson was found not guilty on all charges except abusing a corpse. And I just wanted to say how sorry I was. I can sometimes be selfish, but I would like to think that I've become better in the knowledge that I've upset everyone and hurt so many people with what I've done and I'm forever sorry and I, I'm so sorry. I, I'm really, really sorry. She's still scarred by, by the whole thing. There's no question about it. And for the longest time uh, the case was pending, she was locked up and, you know, everybody's thinking the worst of her. And it took a while, I, th I think, took a while for her to really trust us. And she opened up uh, and it was great. And it was like, it was good a bit for her to open up and know that we were 100% behind her. Uh, there was a plea bargain offered and uh, she was very brave in turning it down and said, I did not kill my baby. And she did. There's no question about that. In Richardson's case, Ritger says expert witnesses for the defense helped secure her near complete acquittal. That, along with an inaccurate narrative that she burned her baby's corpse, he says, was perpetuated by the state. The forensic anthropologist advised the forensic pathologist that she was wrong, that the reason she thought that the baby had been burned was because the bones were wet and dark. But upon further examination of the bones dried out, there's no evidence of burning whatsoever. So it was just, uh, and the state dug their heels. They continued that narrative, uh, which was awful for our client because it made her look like a demon. And uh, until we were able to present the evidence to a jury, 
Warren County, by the way, Warren County, very conservative county jury, uh, who is very pro-life. Uh, I think nine out of our 12 members of jury, very pro-life people. And I only say that because in case your audience may think we had a liberal, uh, you know, who gives a damn about children. But to make a long story short, once they heard the evidence, uh, it was science. science. Uh, that's what won the case for us. In Treviso's case, Ritgers says expert witnesses will be vital. While Treviso argued she did not hear her baby crying after birth, an autopsy from the Office of the Medical Investigator showed the baby's death was not consistent with a stillbirth, finding he had air in his lungs. Ritgers says this fact will be important for the defense to consider. It depends on the science. And the number one thing that stuck out to me is the uh, autopsy report uh, where the pathologist claims that he or she, I don't know whether it's a he or she, found air in the baby's lungs, which they claim would indicate uh, a live birth. It's, it's going to depend a lot on that finding, number one. Ritger says Treviso's attorney should be prepared to find experts of their own. If they're experienced uh, trial lawyers, <coughs> if they're experienced trial lawyers, they probably already know that a lot of this is going to uh, boil down to the actual uh, path, path report, the, the autopsy. And they'll need an expert on their own to determine whether or not there really was air in the lungs, whether that really means that the baby was born alive. Uh, we don't know whether there was any other signs of trauma uh, to the baby. Uh, so I don't know if our case uh, would be that helpful other than they do need some experts. If Rickers were to represent Treviso, he tells us he would begin with gathering background information. I would want to know all the background on the young lady, whether she has any type of mental health issues, whether she's been treated that way, uh, how she's done in school, uh, whether she's always been well, well behaved, well adjusted, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There's a ton of stuff that goes into it to defending this young lady. And, and she's, when, even though she's 19 and considered an adult, she's still, you know, she's very, very young. Rickers believes if Treviso receives some sort of mental health diagnosis, there's a possibility her charges could be altered. It could be helpful in getting a reduced charge, you know, something less than murder, like involuntary homicide or negligent homicide, something like that, which are lesser offenses and carry less time in prison. Treviso's representing attorney has argued she should not face a murder charge, saying, quote, this isn't a classic child abuse case. He also pointed out Treviso has no criminal record. Well, that's a good thing. It's a good thing. Uh, but it's just one piece of the puzzle. There's a lot more to go into this than just the fact that she's never been in trouble. But it may be the body camera video following the birth of Treviso's baby that's highlighted most in court. Um, in terms, I'm sorry about this, but in terms of delivering um, a baby and it looked like you tried to hide it, we do have to have the police involved. And nothing was crying. It came out with nothing. I know, I know. But the, the baby's going to have to be taken for autopsy and... Be Treviso can be heard on the video saying she's scared. Where did you put the baby at? Tell me the truth. Uh, 516 You put it in the bag? Yes. Yeah. She also repeatedly says the baby was not crying. Lexi, I told you about this. But I just asked you, baby, to tell me the truth. I was scared. It was not crying or making. What did 
did you do to it? Rickers believes this may work in Treviso's favor, as defense attorneys could argue she believed the baby was stillborn. But medical staff on the scene told investigators the baby was full term. We did a pregnancy test on her, showed positive. She was denying that she had sex. Um, then she said she had to go to the bathroom. She went to the bathroom. She was in there for quite a while. We kept knocking on the door. Finally, we got her to open the door, and there was blood and shit everywhere. She was cleaning it up. Okay. So we took her back to the room, and there was, I was afraid that she knew she was pregnant. She had done something to herself. Mm -hmm. um, so the doctor started doing a vaginal exam on her. We had the lady come to clean the bathroom. She put the baby in the trash can, and then she put another clean liner over the top of it. Oh, wow. Okay. So they looked, when they looked in there, it looked, there was no trash in there, but it right. was underneath the clean bag. The okay. baby's dead, okay? We have him in trauma too, but she killed the kid. Yeah, how old was the, how old was the baby? I don't know, it's full term. She just had it, she had it in the bathroom was what happened. And then she, whatever she did, I don't know, she's gonna lie. She wouldn't tell us she's pregnant. She's been lying the whole time. Okay. So that's what's going on. Video also shows Treviso's mother referencing a shockingly similar case in the same state. Lexi, have you watched the news of pe the girls that what they do to their babies and what they go to jail? In New Mexico, a teenager faces attempted murder charges after police say she gave birth and left her newborn in a dumpster after wrapping him in garbage bags. Just this month, 19-year-old Alexis Avelio was sentenced to 18 years in prison after surveillance video caught her throwing her newborn baby in a dumpster. The incident happened in Hobbs, New Mexico, only about an hour and a half east of Artesia. Um, in terms, I'm sorry about this, but in terms of delivering um, a baby and it looked like you tried to hide it, we do have to have the police involved. And that thing was crying. It came out with that thing. I know, I know. But the, the baby's going to have to be taken for autopsy and there'll be an investigation. We reached out to Artesia High School for more information on Treviso's upcoming graduation. The superintendent responded, quote, I am unable to make a comment on personal student matters. Reporting for Long Crime Network, I'm Sierra Gillespie.